Hi, Beth. Hey, Beth. Dear, Abby, dear Kiki. Dear Red flag to you. Desperate housewife. Pinocchio. Doesn't want to marry. Love you like I love you. Don't talk to yourself. Cheers, Beth. Cheers. Ill advised. This is ill advised. Hey, Beth. Hello. Hello and welcome. Well, welcome to Ill Advice. The podcast where two best friends tell you what to do when someone else already has. Like your stepsister. And not the corpse of your grandfather. Why? <laughs> Why? Well, Good. you have skeletons and I thought corpse and then that just came out of my mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All that thinking corpse I do bread. before I fucking sh- say shit. Like... <laughs> That's what we're here for. Yeah. You like my rings? I love them. My child's going to be so excited you found those. Uh, Well, you know, the couch monsters didn't get to them. Funnily enough, her new thing is she's stylish. Oh. So she would tell you, Shasha, you're stylish. Dope. Yeah. I got a hair tie, too. Is that a hair tie, or is that just a bracelet? That's a bracelet. Okay, I don't the know. The black one's a hair tie. Yeah, that's definitely a hair tie. Mm. I remember those being all around the house back in the day. Yes. Every corner of the house had a hair tie. In hair. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Beth? Uh, good, actually. Have a appointment <gasps> set up. Stop. With a psychiatrist. Oh, you're going full Monty. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Nice. I feel like everything in my life is going good except for my brain. <laughs> that echo in the cave. <laughs> I'm just a pinball machine. That's it. I'm just a fucking pinball. Ding, 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 just ding. Doing a million things and accomplishing none of them. Oh. Just a pinball. Bing, 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 bing. No, you accomplish all of them. I do? That's why I'm like, what? one of us is broken. <laughs> It's up for debate which one. I was going to say, I feel like it's you, but I'm going to take meds anyway. (laughs) We're going to try this battle one more time. It's you. (laughs) Nobody actually gets to do as much as you do and accomplish it. It's like. (laughs) I just. I'm both flattered and insulted. Yes. I agree. (laughs) Oh my God, I can't. It's really warm in here all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. You have me crying. <laughs> yep. I actually do have a really quick funny story. Tell me. Um. So the other night, my neighbor's little girl was over playing with my little girl. And they were in Mia's room. I was in the kitchen cooking dinner. And I left them alone because I could hear them. So I didn't. I was doing my thing. And then they come out. And they're, it was the cutest thing I read. I'm kind of mad I didn't get any pictures or video, but they come out and they're both decked out in their little dress up dresses, princess dresses with like the big, huge hay hats and like super cute. And they got one of Mia's little princess karaoke machines playing music. So they come out and they're like, we're having a dance party. Uh-oh. And I'm like, I'm like, heck yeah, babe. And I like yeah. turn around and I watch the girls and they're going to town. And all of a sudden the music starts talking about motherfucking fuck shit, <laughs> fuck shit. Fuck. And I was like, what, what are you do? listening to? Like, oh, I'm so confused. What? Turns out they had connected their Bluetooth karaoke princess Disney machine to my phone. <laughs> And was listening to my music playlist for God knows how long. Yeah. New Kevin Gates. For just God knows how long. They were just having a dance party to my fucking, my That's own. Yep. fucking hilarious. I'm like, how did you do this? How did you even, yeah. Huh? That's so it. funny. Yep. And you had paired it then, obviously, I, at some point. I guess. I do have a Disney playlist on my phone for her. But yeah. that is not the one that was playing. No. No, they chose no, it wrong. Was not. They had a, all the new Kevin Gates. They had a dance party too. Well, that was fun. It worked. Oh my God. Funny. I didn't know what to do. I'm like, let me change this song, I guess. This is a good song, but <laughs> honey, let me want you to listen one. to this one. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, we don't like this one. I'm if like, she yeah. goes up slapping bitches and fucking up hoes. <sighs> I know. <laughs> you know the yeah. very moment it happened. <laughs> 
in her straw hat or her hay hat. <laughs> in her, yep, in her straw hat with her princess Having dress. Having a dance party on her Moana karaoke. Yep. Is it the Moana one? I think it was. Oh my God. That's funny shit. Yep. Like, well, uh, I don't know if that was a mom fail or a win. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a win. If that one broke even. <laughs> it's a win because it could have been worse. I don't know. You've heard some of my music. It could have been worse. Possibly. Yeah. We'll go with that. All right. <laughs> Sold. Yeah, how are you doing? I exist Yeah. in between time and normalcy. It's a very strange... Explain. Time? I wish I could. Time um, and normalcy. Yeah, yeah like, uh, how do I explain this? First of all, I haven't seen Fred in like four weeks because oh. I don't have health insurance. Oh, no. Because of the whole job thing, but right. I technically already do have health insurance, and so I think I'm due to see him this week, which is really, or next week, I don't know, but I'm ready for it. But it's like, I'm just in this, like, I don't know what's happening, what day is it, what time is it, what's going on? I started a new job, and I'm like, do I want to be doing this line of work for the rest of my life? And, you know, kind of like an existential crisis. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, But not a fun one. Right. I want to go out and buy the fucking Porsche and (laughs) get a 25-year-old pregnant and and buy a really big pinky ring that doesn't have hearts and whales on them. I like the hearts and whales for you. I know, but I want the big gold pimpin' one. True, true, true. You know, so everyone could say I'm going through a midlife crisis in my mid-30s. Get a diamond whale. Yeah. I'm at a point where I'm like, trying to figure out what i really want it's not a bad thing like i'm not in like a bad space i'm mm-hmm. just in a like what is life space? yeah what's the word when you're um not complacent con- yeah content yes. un uncon discontent uncontent complacent yeah but content contentment is a question that was the word i was thinking content like you're not content yeah i don't even know if that's the case i don't know I just exist. Well. And that's it. And I don't think I have a funny story for you, so I'm going to drink instead. Cheers to existing. We're drinking Zinfomaniac, and there is a semi-nude woman on it holding a glass of her own. Heck yeah. I got it because there was a sticker under it that said 2015 wine choice. Oh. <laughs> but it's 2019 that we're drinking. And if you haven't guessed it, it's a red Zinfandel. I like that name. Zinfomania. I know. I love Zins, so. You do love Zins? I want to be a Zinfomaniac. The scantily clad bottle tempts you. Its secrets yet to be revealed. You remove the cork carefully. Slowly. Talk your desire building with every twist. Can you do this with an accent? It's not going to be very seductive. Yeah, your Puss in Boots one. Oh, my Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio, I can remember his <laughs> name. <laughs> Steady now. You've entered the realm of Zinfomania. Ooh, it's hot in here. Where nothing gets in the way of your passion and your craving for that most hedonistic of wines. Ooh. Zinfandel. Sure, it's from Lodi. <laughs> yes, it's from Old Vines. But Zinfomaniac is more than that. Arousing aromas. Ooh. Rich, spicy flavors. A bold and voluptuous mouthfeel. <laughs> <laughs> a long, satisfying climax. Wow. Try it. Your taste buds will be eternally grateful when you just got to have it. Drink responsibly. <laughs> they're, they're putting a lot of... Uh, that was really hot. <laughs> they're pu- I told you that voice would work. <laughs> they're putting a lot of uh, expectation on their wine, I think. It smells really good. It's making my mouth water, actually. It smells like my spice sangria candle. <laughs> <laughs> to spice sangria. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> no, it is good. It is really good. It's juicy. I feel like it's a little boozy for a Zin, no? I don't know. I feel like a Zin is more like juicy. It's less like alcoholy and more juicy. <laughs> I feel like this is very juicy. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know the last time I had a Zin. So Probably with me. Yeah. Third? Jeez. I love it. 
it screams fall, doesn't it? Cheese and crackers. Oh, shit. <sighs> Lots of salami and pepperoni. Are we done recording? <laughs> this episode <laughs> is over. Thank you. You've Thank been you for advised. listening. No, I really actually, I really enjoy it. This is a I love it. Biff Night wine. Mm-hmm. With cheese and crackers. With cheese and crackers. <laughs> yep. And salami. Genoa, freshly sliced. Yep. Right from the deli. Oh. Rating? At least four and a half, if not yeah. five. I, I think absolutely I'm go with would. Four and a half. I would absolutely buy this for myself and to bring somewhere. Yeah. I would buy it for myself to share with no one, but I would also share it with you. Bring, so yeah, two bottles. One for me, one for you. Yep. Oh, yeah. Easily. So four and a half? Yeah, four and a half. All right, four and a half is the average score. Good job. Get you some. Oh yeah, for sure. If you like dry wines, this well, is how much beautiful. was it? Uh, Thirteen ninety nine. Well, definitely get you some. Yeah, get you plenty. A lot of them. Yeah, all the sums. Yep. And while you're doing that, make sure that you're playing our podcast so we can carry on with our questions for this week. Yeah. Cheers. This week's questions. Burp or hiccup? Burp or hiccup? Pick one. <laughs> Welcome to the part of the, the podcast where we guess if this is a burp or a hiccup. <laughs> you could be a winner of no million dollars. <laughs> Send in your responses. Was it a burp or a hiccup? I don't Maybe know a verb. A verb? A vomit burp. <laughs> I was like, hiccup or burp? This doesn't work for me. So then I went, herp. Ah, herp. Bip up doesn't really Bip roll up. off the tongue. <laughs> no, it rolls off the lips. <laughs> this week's questions are coming from the independent.co.uk from Virginia Ironside. This one is called My Son and His On Off Girlfriend Are Expecting a Child He Doesn't Want. What Can We Do? Ooh. Subtitle is, we dislike her intensely, yet we can't abandon a child who will be part of our family. And I said child. <laughs> I forgot Ooh, the child. D. I forgot the D in child. <laughs> Dear Virginia, although they broke up after six months, my son and his girlfriend, a single mother, still slept together occasionally. Girl, they all do it. Yeah. <laughs> now she's pregnant. My son wants her to have an abortion, but she refuses. We dislike her intensely, and she lives three hours from us. Yet we can't abandon a child who will be part of our family. She says my son needn't have a role in its life, but he feels obliged to take responsibility, even though he's just starting out with a new job far away. His life will be ruined by one night of stupidity. What can we do? You are sincerely, Peter and Barbara. Oh, they came right out. Good This gracious. is who we is. Did I say when this was from? Nope. This is from October 25th of 2015. Did it say at all the son and or baby mama's age? Mm-mm. Old enough to get pregnant. That's all. Oh, well, that's... I uh, know. That's not very... Nope. <laughs> Oof. What, what can we do, Beth? Well, obviously, you can't decide for the one who will be carrying that child mm-hmm. however you can instill what's even the right word morals values values dignity i didn't raise you to be a deadbeat yeah invoke the power of the parent but also but that doesn't, yeah that doesn't guarantee anything either oh i don't even i don't even know where to start disliking her is irrelevant yeah it's not agreed agreed it, it, it literally is what it is she's going to have a baby now, all of you have a choice in this. He has a choice to be a father or not. You have choices to be active grandparents or not. What can you do? Make that decision. Do you want to be involved? And that's it. So, as a father, you're a mm-hmm. father. You have a son. Mm-hmm. Who's... Shut your mouth. <laughs> right around that age. <laughs> I can't imagine you being okay if Wyatt said, I'm choosing to not have any involvement i'll be infuriated so what do you even do because like you can't uh, what do you even do honestly and this is me saying it because it's not and then do you be involved even i so i would be involved i don't even know where to start (laughs) i would be involved and support baby mama along the way you know and just you know what can i do can i watch the baby i would like to spend time with him or her them Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. 
And that's that's really all I can do. Of course, I'm going to be like putting a noose around Wyatt's neck and carrying him around with me and be like, this is your son or your daughter or whatever. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. honestly, I can't force him. We, we can't force anybody to do something that they don't want to do. We have to meet them where we're at. But as my son, that kid's going to be catching a whole lot of shit. Yeah. But yeah, I know that dynamic in a lot of families where the grandparents where are involved, the but mom, the parent yeah, yeah, isn't. Yeah. I even have that in my family. Yeah, I can't. I, can't. I would be forcing my child. Mm-hmm. I just, I feel like I would. Where it was like, listen, you know where babies come from and how they're made. You don't get to pick or choose. Yeah. If she's keeping this baby, you're there. You don't have to be with her. You don't have to be in a relationship. You don't have to do all that, but you will be there. You created this child also. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't want children, you should have done the necessary precautions to not have a child. Right. You don't get to pick and choose if she gives birth. And you don't get to pick and choose to be a dad either. Because guess what? You are one now. Yeah, it's so hard. I know. You know, ultimately our kids are going to do, they're going to be grown up. And then you take on that financial in, in... All the parts that your son should be handling? I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I mean, it doesn't hurt if you can contribute, but yeah, you're not... It's it's a convoluted mess, but... Right, I know it's not like your obligation and stuff, but I just, I feel like out of guilt that I would. I wouldn't be doing anything out of guilt. I'd be doing something for my family. Like my son's a deadbeat you know I mean? and not providing yeah, for but this child that he helped to create. But I think you so need to be I okay to. with it not being about you. It's not a reflection of you. Your pers- your child is going to be who they're going to be regardless. I know. No, I know. But like now this child needs to be provided for. Right. And if my son's not doing it, mm-hmm. does it all fall on her because she chose to keep the baby that took two people to create? Technically, yes. Oh, I know. Technically, yes. But you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I just don't see myself being okay with like... Right. Yeah, it's a it's a rough situation, but in, in the case it of is. these parents, I really want to know how old. Yeah, I don't I don't know with these parents. It, it's they dislike her, and that's their biggest qualm, which is kind of bullshit. Yeah, like, that's we don't like her, so she doesn't want to give a kid up, and blah blah blah. Like it's no, it's not your choice. It's not his choice, you know. And you either want to be involved or you don't. Make that decision and be at peace with it. Yeah, do you think they're writing, hoping that someone will be like, oh, well, you know, if she wants the baby and you guys don't, then go ahead, keep living your life. Yeah. Or they're waiting for someone to be like, this is how you help her abort the baby without her knowing. Like, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want someone to affirm what they want. Yeah. I understand you don't like her, but it really is what it is. I'm so not glad that I have a daughter. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, I'm so glad I don't have a son. And fuck that. <laughs> It's worse. I don't know what's worse. If she says yes, you're screwed. (laughs) Great. Virginia says, I sympathize. And like you, my first reaction would be to put my head in my hands and stuff wool in my ears to stop the sound of the crashing of thunder and the resounding of the word, quote, ruined. All right. We didn't even get that far. His life is ruined now because she's having a baby. What do you say to that? I want to say that they're blaming it all on the woman, the girl. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. Well, they say that his life is ruined by one night of stupidity. Right. So I think they're putting the blame on both of them. But I see what you're saying. Yeah, it sounds like she decided to keep it. So mm-hmm. his life is ruined. Right. Because he was an idiot one night. Which we both know is not true. Right. His life's only ruined if he says he's going to commit and then just becomes a deadbeat. And then your like, life can still continue with a child. You still have one. Like they did it. <laughs> True. Right? So, oh, no. Or did they? Or they and maybe have, that's why maybe, they're like, great. Maybe they don't have much faith in their son, you know, that yeah. IQ, those points drop after you have a kid. I don't know. That's why I really want to know how old he is. Yeah. College age, probably. Probably. Or probably not. But yeah, if his future is ruined, probably. And he just started a new job. And yeah, anyways. I'll continue. But I hope that by now you've got over that stage and realize that there's absolutely nothing you can do except adapt your lives to fit these new developments. Let's start with the word, quote, ruined. Your son's life isn't ruined. It's changed. 
Yes, it has changed rather drastically, and it's a change that will affect him for the rest of his life. But for all you know, this child may grow up to be a glorious addition to his and your lives and fill you with purpose and pride. Unlikely, I know, but don't rule it out. Next, be proud of yourselves. What? Unlikely. Oh, to fill them with purpose and pride because they don't (laughs) like her and they already resent the child for ruining his life. That's my... Yeah. I think she's just playing on them being idiots. (laughs) Idiots. Idiots. Next, be proud of yourself for bringing up a son with such good values. It's not all young men who feel they ought to take responsibility for their offspring, even when they're divorced. So you can pat yourselves and him on the back for his deciding to do the right thing. He's not going to abandon the baby. He may not see it daily, but I hope he will be a constant, even if distant, presence in his or her life. The child will have a father. And of course, you're right. You can't abandon this woman. You say you dislike her intensely. Fine, you can't stop doing that, but you must find some good things about her and dwell on them. It is possible, even with people you dislike intensely, to love a bit of them. And if you concentrate on those aspects, your loving feelings can grow. I do believe it is possible, if you try hard enough, to force yourself to like someone you hate at least a little bit. And the way you do this is to get to know them better. Ask her around. Ask her about herself, her hopes, her fears. Ask her about her childhood. Try, if you possibly can, to understand how she ticks. On the whole, people aren't vile without there being some good reason behind it. Trying to take revenge for some slight they received in their childhood, deep-seated insecurity, a feeling of hopeless inadequacy. Imagine yourself as her therapeutic counselor and imagine her as a horrible child who's been brought to you by her despairing parents. Try to win her trust and analyze why she is the way she is. She can't be totally awful after all or your son wouldn't have gone out with her even for a few months. Years on, you may still hate her, but you must learn to love something about her. Not in a dippy, quote, love conquers all, end quote, kind of way. True as that may be, but for practical reasons. Not only for your son's sake, but also for that of your grandchild. I love it. Pretty great, huh? Yeah. Thorough. Yeah. I love it. She literally just, in the most respectful manner ever, told them to grow up. Oh, I was going to say go fuck yourself, but yeah. Yours is more therapist ease she just told him grow up you don't like this girl okay get over it tough shit you don't really have a choice in this matter figure it out yeah she's right the son didn't say he wasn't going to be a part of it they didn't say anything about that either yeah because all they said was the son doesn't want it he feels obliged to take responsibility as he should yeah 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 yeah, yeah, as he should right you know he's going to be a great dad because he feels that commitment and that responsibility and he'll later on find out that it's probably the it's best, the best thing, thing that's, that's ever happened, happened to him. Yep. I don't know if I said that. Oh, sorry. I cut no, you off. No, you didn't cut me off. You said what I was saying, but oh, I don't know what my lips said. Way. <laughs> <laughs> they just moved. <laughs> that's really funny. So thank you for covering up. My, my, what is it? My slip up, my blunder, <laughs> my vocal vomit. Next one. The next one is from September 20th, 2015, and it's called, I fear my daughter has fallen in love with a very unsuitable man who belongs to a cult. Subtitle, my husband and I are thinking of trying to employ someone to kidnap her. (gasps) Best Lifetime movie ever. No shit. You know what we should do? We should start taking all of these stories that we say are going to be really good Lifetime movies. And make and a start Lifetime fucking, movie. Uh, forget that. We're just going to oh. go to the network and pitch them. Once we're deemed creators, we're fucking set for life. Well, can you also star in them? Because you'll bring in all the views. You're like a Lifetime god. I'm a desperate... No, like all the moms sitting down watching Lifetime <laughs> are going to be like... Girl, but Ray I don't want to be in the new movie. As a bad guy either. Girl, Ray's in the new movie. We're watching it. We're watching it. I don't know. Tell Marcus he's babysitting the kids. Anthony will bring him beer. Marcus is going to be like, no, Ray's in that movie. You're not watching. Oh god, <laughs> let me guess. Ray's in that movie. What do you know about him? Did you wiki him yet? <laughs> Did you IMBD him? IMBD. <laughs> 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 Dear Virginia, my daughter has fallen in love with a very unsuitable man who I fear belongs to a cult. I know she gives him her salary, and I think he gives most of it to his cult leader. Good grief. Is this just like the regular Catholic church? This is... (laughs) (laughs) Literally. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> Literally, like, <laughs> sorry, mom and dad, but yes. <sighs> She's now talking of moving to India with him, and I worry that I may never see her again. My husband and I are trying to think of trying. Stop. I'm, I'm pretty sure my mom's second husband was in India. No. What? Indiana. <laughs> Continue. I'm keeping that in here. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> My husband and I are thinking of trying to employ someone to kidnap her so she can be brainwashed back again. Huh? Because I feel sure that is her problem. But she's adamant that she wants to stay with this man and take on his beliefs. I'm desperate. What else could we do? Yours sincerely, Fiona. Mm. I can't hear the word Fiona without thinking Shrek. Oh, I was thinking of... Um, Shameless? Yep. Yeah. I don't want to think about Shrek. <laughs> go ahead, Biff. What uh, else could we do? Uh, you go. I'm checking something real quick. Are you Googling cults? In India? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's, it feels like it's absent of proof. But... She's giving him her salary? Like, what? And now she's talking to moving to India with him? I don't think there's much that you can do. It sounds like she's of age to make her own decisions. Just fucking pray, though not at the Catholic Church, that she's going to be I. The complete story behind India's most interesting cults. Plural? Plural. Here are a few of them. So there's definitely, I guess, cults in India. Well, yeah. Thuggies. Thuggies? Thuggies. Is that like Huggies, but for gangsters? Yeah, with two Gs. <laughs> I mean, two E's. Oh. Thuggies. All right. Strangling them with a handkerchief or a noose. Oh, that has nothing to do with the Catholic Church. Then they would quickly rob their victim and bury them carefully. Hmm. According to the Guinness Book of Records, oh. the thuggies were responsible for approximately 2 million deaths. What? How successful does a cult ne- need to be for it to get away with 20 deaths, never mind millions? And to make it into the uh, Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> like, why are we glorifying them? <laughs> okay, Another one, like, what can you do? It's my kid. I'm going to fucking lock you in the basement and start my own cult. No, no, no. you ain't going to. They're going to kidnap her. Exactly. Who the fuck are you going to employ? We don't worry about that part. (laughs) (laughs) We don't worry about that part. I'm just thinking about them, like, going to all these Italian eateries asking about, like, you know. That was my exact, like. I had a problem. (laughs) Remember that man? Uncle Anthony. (laughs) Do we still get his number? Tell him we need a favor. It's like going to the North End of Boston. Mob or cult? (laughs) Like, which is... I don't... Yeah. Right. They're going to try to get her out of the cult with the mob. (laughs) (laughs) If you're going to be involved with anything. (laughs) Honor over everything. (laughs) Oh, at least you'll make more money. No shit. Although you're on the hook for life. Yeah, I do wish um, that they had kind of given more... Like, why do you think this? Yeah. What is, how do you, why do you feel like how all her money is going to him and then he's giving it to Yeah, this she's one? just saying, I know she gives her salary to him. And like, I'm with you. Like, we don't have enough information to really respond to it. And she wants to move to India? Yeah. Apparently to be part of this cult. But like, my thought process is also like, I don't think she's so much signed up for a cult that she's signed up for a, a man. A catfish? I think they know each other. He's taking money from her. She's going to move to go marry the love of her life. I I watched this on 90 Day Fiance. Okay, so I didn't go that way because it didn't say anything about them not knowing each other physically or in person. Okay. It does say they... No, she says she's... Now they're thinking about moving. She's thinking about moving to India with him. So my assumption is he's... Yep. She's going to go with him. Like he's... In where she is. Yeah. India, not Indiana. <laughs> wrong, wrong cult. Wrong continent. <laughs> D- different cult. <laughs> I think you're thinking of a biker gang. <laughs> <laughs> In his mom's basement. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. Nothing. She's grown enough 
to make this decision and there's literally nothing you can say or do to make her not. I mean, you can say everything you want, but don't expect it to be effective. Also expect it to do the exact opposite of what you're yep. trying to do. But I love him. I don't care what my parents think. I'm going to be with you forever. Just reassure her. I love you. Be safe. If you ever feel off, if you ever feel unsafe, if you ever feel uncomfortable, if you ever feel anything, if you change your mind, even if you don't have a reason, call us. We will be on the next flight to India. Or give you money to come back home. Or not give you money because (laughs) who knows? Well, we'll buy a flight. (laughs) Yes. Much better, right? (laughs) Yeah. I think that's all you can do. There is nothing else. Like, what do you expect to do? You just need to let her feel safe enough to call you if she needs to. Listen, I'm going to be a huge hypocrite right now because my son's entering adulthood slowly but surely. (laughs) (laughs) That's so perfect, though. And I love him. (laughs) Slowly slowly but but surely. (laughs) And it's like... Your adult children are like any adult in this world. You cannot make them do something they don't want to. Mm -hmm. It just is what it is, you know? And I I actually am realizing how much I'm saying it is what it is. But literally, we need to accept that. And I'm a hypocrite because, of course, I'd be on your fucking page. I'd be like, nope, he's not getting kidnapped. No, no, the boyfriend is, and he's getting dismembered. True. Like, you know what I, I mean? I like that one Thank better. you so much. And it was the mafia. Yes. What's the difference? Between the mob and the mafia? Yeah. There is no difference. No? No. Are they the same thing? Mm-hmm. For real? Mm-hmm. Well, then I'm just going to call them the mafia. That's way hotter anyway. Yeah. When I was younger, I told my mom I was going to marry a mafia boss. And? And I think she Did sent you get me to church. <laughs> I also told her I wanted to be a stripper. (laughs) No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Yeah, I wanted to be a teacher, a stripper, and a mob wife. You can do all three of those in one person. (laughs) I literally was like six. And and how did that go? I think she just really honed in on the teacher. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely, you can be a teacher. A teacher, a mob wife, uh, and a stripper, stripper. walk into a bar. Yep. Guess what? It's me. And what does she say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I think your response, <laughs> Sans, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. <laughs> is perfect. Yeah. My dad kind of instilled that in me. And I think it's something that stuck with me forever. Yeah. Was like, no questions asked. Absolutely not. But he like stood by that. Yeah. Like I called him one time, definitely should have gotten my ass whooped and he, no questions asked, just came and got me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's and not he like he's like the, the parents that are like, just tell us the truth, you won't get in trouble. And you tell them and then they fucking clock you upside Ooh, the head. bitch, you shouldn't have told yep. me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck them. No, he really lived it. And like to this day, I could call him from prison like, dad, I fucked up. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he might ask, <laughs> but he's coming to get me, you know? You mean all those years ago when I could have just called your yep. father? <laughs> yep, I didn't know his number by heart, I don't think. I don't just, think I had just it. Just here's some Jake's. <laughs> Definitely wasn't gone, Jake. You mean I stayed up till three in the morning for the bail bondsman for nothing? Yep, you could have called <laughs> Big Richard. Oh, uh, Want the response? Yeah. Virginia says, I can understand why you feel so very distressed about your daughter's involvement with this man and his cult, if indeed it is one. The problem is that she's an adult and in thrall to a man. And who knows? It may be real love. He may give her everything she needs. However, even if she has actually been brainwashed, as you suspect, I do think that your kidnapping wheeze would be a mad, if not illegal, (laughs) idea. (laughs) I still support it. Brits and their words. (laughs) First, I would look up the name of the group on the internet and get in touch with many people in the same position as you. Do you think that there's a, like, my daughter's in a group, a cult support group? We're Googling it. We totally are. We're Facebooking it. That's right. You may find that these friends and relations of other cult members have formed groups and meetings that you can go to and you can discuss strategies with them and perhaps join one of the groups that exist and fight cults. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I read that. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. Here. To fight the cults, <laughs> such as <laughs> the ones you think your daughter has joined. First rule about fight cult. <laughs> <laughs> you don't talk about fight cult. <laughs> then you must find out everything you can about the cult. What are its beliefs? Who runs it? How many adherents are there? What is the address in India? <laughs> yeah, they publicize that. You can find that on Google Maps. Is it actually a cult or is it just a harmless group of people with non-threatening beliefs? Assuming it is a cult, remember that they flourish on two things, conflict and money. They can deal with furious letters. They can deal with wailing and gnashing of teeth. They can deal with kidnappers and threats. Not only can they deal with it, but they thrive on it. They, they can't can, deal with the mafia. That's right. Or the mob. They can't <laughs> exist as a cult without being partly defined by a barrage of anguish and disapproval from outside. Your threats are meat and drink to them. Meat and drink. Meat and drink. It will be much harder for them to deal with sympathy, kindness, and love. I would write to your daughter saying that you are so glad she has found happiness. Ask to know more about the organization and wish her well. She didn't mute the... No, I guess not. Colin just yelled, fuck you to a woodpecker, though. <laughs> In case you were wondering what that message was about. I wasn't, but I am now. <laughs> oh, fuck, fuck you to a woodpecker? I? Yep, the one that's been pecking at the siding of the house. Oh. <laughs> Tell her you will always love her and keep up the barrage of affectionate and approving letters nonstop. Yes. Not only so that she knows you're always there whenever she needs you, but also to so that you. she find it harder to cut you out of her life. Completely. Yes. Yes, you'll have to lie a bit when you express enthusiasm for the life she's chosen, but they're lying at their end. Use every strategy to keep in touch. Secondly, always keep the idea of money alive. Promises that you might give her money, talk of inheritances, even giving her a bit now and then. Cults are incredibly greedy and they will never cut you off if they imagine that you're a source of cash. That's fucking Sneaky brilliant. Pete. That's Virginia. That name is way too like prim and proper for you to have these thoughts. I love it. It's great. Apart from that, I wish you well. Many children do remember step into cults at a point in their lives only to step what? out of them four years i'm sorry not four some years later i don't know where four came from it's a stage a very Many unhappy children? stage what the fuck? But possibly one that won't last forever i don't Do know we had they're... pokemon i was gonna say are gangs like cults crazy bones britney spears crazy bones yeah like the rapper no oh. before the rapper meet me on the crossroads <laughs> <laughs> musical stylings of LaBeouf. You're welcome. Perfect response. It was. Have we done Virginia before? I don't think so. I don't think I'd so remember either. Virginia Ironside. That's yeah. the best name ever. It is a great name. Ironside? Yeah. Left side, Ironside. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she uh, took what I said and put it on crack. I think she wrote it for a lifetime. Your daughter wants to play around? Here's how you play back. Literally. Fucking hey, Virginia. Next one. I love Virginia. This one is called, I worry I may be a psychopath. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. The psychological explanation for what you describe would certainly not be that of a psychopath. That's what it says as the subtitle for advice. Uh, weird. Okay. I'm just going to read it. Yeah. Dear Virginia, please don't <laughs> laugh. But I'm worried I may be a psychopath. Please don't laugh. All my life, I found it very difficult to feel emotion. Although I often pretend to be upset about bad things, inside, I don't feel anything. When my father died, I didn't feel anything except rage. And I also got very ill, but I couldn't cry. Sometimes I'll cry about something I read in the papers, but anything personal leaves me cold, except for physical symptoms. What do you think? And if I am a psychopath, is there anything I can do about it? Your sincerely, Rebecca. Oh. Well, that title isn't anywhere where I thought this was going to go. What did you think? I was just waiting for something more concrete. Like I secretly kill Like Webster's animals. Dictionary says, this is a leave psychopath. Them under my and, bed. And I kill animals and leave them under my bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the first clue is the fact that you worry you may be a psychopath. Right. I was going to say that you feel rage. Like when you're... 
No, that's probably grieving. the only feeling they feel. But when you're grieving and you feel rage, like when her dad died or his dad died or their dad died, to me that's just grieving because anger is secondary, right? Yeah. Did it specifically say? When my father died, I didn't feel anything except rage and I got very ill. Oh, okay. But I couldn't cry. Um, so my first reaction or response was trauma. You have a lot of trauma in your life. And really? that's why you're feeling cold and numb. Do you think that some of this is attributed to dad? Is that possible? To feel that rage and not cry, not feel sadness? Well, feel sadness, it but sounds not like recognize it. felt this way for a long time, like mm-hmm. even before dad died. Well, that's what I mean. Like, do you think it has something to do with him? Like resentment or Oh, whatever. like trauma? Yeah. That could, that could, yeah. Because I think I would feel rage too if I disliked Went my dad and he died before and I died, got yeah. to... Yeah, that actually does make a lot of sense. Yeah. When we go through trauma, especially repeated trauma, we become... Desensitized? Yes, desensitized. And that's very much what this sounds like. You're just desensitized. You're not a psychopath. There's so much more to psychopaths than just their lack of... Okay. ...feelings and and whatnot. Compassion, all that shit. I wonder why someone would think that though. Like what are what are the things out there that describe a psychopath that someone would want to kind of like self-diagnose or kind of feel that way? Definitely a lack of empathy is like the number one mm-hmm. thing is that like if you were coming to me crying and upset and I couldn't feel what you were feeling. Mm-hmm. I had no under like just absolutely no so that kind of like her, like, I don't feel anything. I have to pretend to feel bad. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That is absolutely, and that's what they do. They see, okay, so when somebody's sad, they cry. Mm-hmm. So now if I'm in a situation that people should be sad about, mm-hmm. I'll cry. Mm-hmm. They learn it from people because it's not, they don't have that. They don't feel that. So they learn how to react and respond to the people around them. That's so interesting. And that's their frontal lobe. Oh. Yes, there's something in there that, like, doesn't form properly. I say You're just not a psychopath. them asking the question means you're not a psychopath. Kind of like, I Although think I'm a narcissist, but not. psychopaths are aware. Not, they're not, aware. Oh, are they? they? Just, yeah, they just don't care. They're not. That's why I said I think the first sign here is I worry I'm a psychopath. Uh-huh. Psychopaths are not worried that they're psychopaths. They know and they're good. They fucking, them. they're... Let's do this. Really? Yes. So that's, I think that blows my mind psychologically, both for myself and other people around me. To know that you're a fucking raging and not fucker and not like yeah. want to let, well, how do I do better? For example, like a narcissist, for example, like they are just a narcissist. You know what I mean? That's just like how their mind works. And, and it's not necessarily like, something that they've developed over time. It's just like, that's where the connections are in their mind. And I think that what they do, at least from what I've read and heard, is, is subconscious, right? It's not something that they're going out of their way to do, per se, because I'm a narcissist. It's just that I'm a narcissist, and it's, that's why I do these things. Where you're saying somebody that's a psychopath is like, I'm a psychopath, and this is why I'm doing these things rather than like blaming it on it. You know what I mean? No. Like, I don't think a narcissist says like, oh, I'm doing this because I'm a narcissist. Gotcha, bitch. You know, in their head. Okay. In their head, they're like. That's just how it plays out because that's what's going that's on That's what a narcissist does. Mm-hmm. Right. Whereas a psychopath is like, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> Because <laughs> you I'm fell a in my trap. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like I planned this all out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I, I wouldn't put that together. I wouldn't think that there is a separation there because at the end of the day, the greater glory of a narcissist or a psychopath is their pride in themselves. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So I don't think I'm expecting a response to that. More, I'm just like I'm, like this is how I'm kind of blown away by that. Yeah, I think I follow because I n- narcissist do a lot of, well, not all, some do a lot of things like subconsciously. Mm -hmm. They're not aware that they're actively doing this. Like all the things they're doing for you, they're self-serving. Whereas, yeah, they don't always know that they are manipulating you, Mm -hmm. that they are, you know, emotionally 
or mentally tearing you down to keep you hooked. And right. whereas psychopaths typically are very conscious mm-hmm. and intentional. Where it's like, I know that I lack this part. I should have just asked my if they brain. were intentional and that would have been yes. you wouldn't have asked for clarity. Intentional, yes. <laughs> I'm a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the response on this one? I do. Shall we go? Oh, right. It's right here. I do. I th- but I also can't imagine, especially you, because we're so the opposite of psychopath. We live and breathe your feelings. Even oh if we God. don't know you, we walk in a room and we're like, oh my God. Oh, shit. Oh my God, you're so we sad. We haven't even talked to you yet. I love you. What's wrong? How can I help you? You know what I mean? So I can't imagine like, this poor person is like, something's wrong with me. Am mm-hmm. I a fucking psychopath? Like, I don't feel emotions. I don't feel these things. And that's like heartbreaking. That's like so much trauma. You're just completely numbed. Like, just. What would you suggest for someone in this situation? Therapy. Well, duh. That's the only thing you yeah. can do. If you've been through so much stuff or something, Can't not even, even so I much. Asked you that question. <laughs> not even so much, but just something that one thing that was so traumatic mm-hmm. that your emotions shut down like that. Right. There's nothing else you can do. You have to figure out if you're not aware, you know, if there was multiple traumas in your life and you can can't pinpoint it. Or if there was one really huge one that just completely changed your whole being Mm -hmm. like you you have to you have to learn how to manage that i just think this poor person must just be so like i just feel bad my heart breaks for them imagine being curious if you're a psychopath because you feel no emotions because you're so like desensitized no way i know yeah the more i think about it the more i'm like hopping on your bandwagon here like where do you have to be? Where does your trauma have to exactly. live for you to? My dad just feel this died, way? and I can't even cry. I'm just too busy being pissed. Yeah, I just feel rage. That's the only feeling I feel is rage. So the fact that you're asking if you're a psychopath, mm-hmm. then that's yeah, really interesting dynamic there for me. I want to see what Virginia says. Virginia says the psychological explanation for what you describe would certainly not be that of a psychopath. A psychopath feels nothing, not even for sad stories in the papers. Psychopaths also would never declare, as you do, that they, quote, worry about mm-hmm. being one. Good job, Beth. Thank you, thank you. They may know that they have psychopathic tendencies, but they're strangers to worrying about them. It sounds to me as if you, it sounds to me as if you're one of these people who may well have suffered some trauma in their lives and, as a result, have cut themselves off from their feelings. It's a bore, but it's a coping mechanism. At some point in your childhood, you decided that you couldn't cope with any more and you shut down. That's why you can feel sympathy and joy and sadness about other people, but not when it comes to anything personal. Piff, can you just get your fucking degree? Yes, thank you. Your shutting down mechanism became a defense against thinking you'd go mad, perhaps, or a feeling that if you let anything in, you might crack up completely. Rather than fret about this and try to uncover what it was, remember you may have taken the right decision. Uh, what was the decision? The shutting down mechanism. Oh, okay. You think, what are you, I looked at you and then you asked your question because I was waiting for you to respond to that. Like, do you have any feelings about that? Yep. What worked for us then mm-hmm. does not always work for us now. Oh. As a matter of fact, that's what keeps us stuck from moving forward okay okay from repeating cycles yes that makes worked in childhood absolutely yeah and kudos to you Mm -hmm. you literally survived yourself Mm -hmm. that's the right way to say that survived yourself (laughs) protected yourself (laughs) survived yourself is right because who is our worst own fucking enemy yeah right now as an adult you're feeling this may not be no longer beneficial to me. Mm-hmm. So I both agree and not disagree, but sometimes it's time to learn new mechanisms. Gotcha. We are made up of three components. 
mind, heart, and body, and sometimes the body can behave in ways that leave us baffled. Hence, you're getting very ill after your father died. Getting ill was your form of grieving. Your body, however, has not shut down, and like a lot of people, often you find that your body does your feeling for you. Psychopaths do not get ill after difficult events. They sail through, unperturbed. There is a common misconception that we all respond in the same way when it comes to major events. When disaster happens, we scream and cry. When something joyful happens, we dance and whoop with joy. But we're not all like that. Quite a few of us have other ways not only of expressing emotions, but of feeling them. And that doesn't mean we're mentally ill. The other thing to remember about your ability to stay cool is that it can be a tremendous bonus. You couldn't be a brain surgeon if you were too empathetic, or at least didn't have the capacity to shut down your emotions during the operation. You couldn't be a bomb disposal expert because you're, you'd be gibbering. Gibbering? Oh, shaking. actually, there's a comma gibbering. there. Shaking. <laughs> yeah. Gibbering, shaking, and sweating wreck the moment you'd reach out to untangle the wires i will never be a bomb disposal expert please don't i ain't calling you i drink so much coffee i'll call you for everything in this planet except for to come get this bomb off me <laughs> some judges have psychopathic tendencies and a very good thing too or they'd be leaves in the wind when it came to listening to the sob stories of our, of the accused not all psychopaths are grinning serial killers. Many are good and noble and essential members of society. Don't worry about yourself and your reactions so much. Yes, you may be a bit unusual, but there are plenty of people like you. And try to dwell on the pluses, the ability to keep calm in a storm, the ability, perhaps, to reason your way out of difficult situations instead of succumbing to shrieking and lashing out. And consider yourself not, perhaps, cursed, but rather, in your own way, admirable. Okay. I see the route that she took there. Absolutely. I just but you've wish. You've got a look on your face, right? Yeah. <laughs> but. Right. But the writer didn't seem okay that this is where they're at. Mm -hmm. So it didn't answer the concern. It didn't. How do I fix this? Mm -hmm. How do I go about changing this? I love that she was like, hey embrace yourself like don't beat yourself up for mm -hmm. you've gotten yourself this far you've right. survived trauma you've and i love that part and it's so true that there are so many good things that like can come out of well, i guess our traumas or mm -hmm. our coping mechanisms and that's what they're there for mm -hmm. um but he just the writer just doesn't seem like oh, okay so this is just something i can be like forever it seemed like they are wanting to like, I don't necessarily love being this way. So I do wish that there was some sort of addressing of like, it does sound like you went through a lot of trauma or just, or something or major trauma right. or, you know, maybe we can start there or maybe therapist. Yeah. Or, I think I'm with you there. Like, I don't think she addressed the therapy part of it, which was a very essential component to all of that. Like you're dealing with trauma. Absolutely. Cause she like had the in, same. And these are the byproducts of it. Like said, good like, job. Yeah. But she didn't tell her to deal with the trauma. Right. You might want to tackle that part and you'll find yourself having different responses. Yeah. I agree with you. But these were very they were good, good responses generally. They were good. Yeah. The questions were great. Yeah, they were. But they are, they do seem older. Is this, is it still running? I, because I know you found these questions. I'm I didn't just reading explore. Them. Yeah. I just came across this page and found some really good questions. So I chose them. I didn't fully explore yet, though. It popped right up on Google. So <laughs> good, because I literally spent 40 minutes on the elliptical today trying to figure out what questions to do. <laughs> and I couldn't even fucking come up with a good columnist, never mind questions. But yeah, I don't think we've done Virginia before. I think these were great questions. They were really great. And great responses. I think Virginia was very comprehensive, except for that last one where she could have been a little bit more, hey, did you, Possibly have you heard of therapy? therapy? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. I liked her. Yeah. Ironside. We'll add her to the list. John. That we'll one day finally put on our website for people to look at. 
You don't need to look at it. You can just listen to our episodes. Oh, do that. Oh, but in the meantime, send us your questions, your comments, and all your concerns to ill advised the podcast at gmail.com or catch up on all of our episodes and find all of our columnists and sources in our show notes at ill advised the podcast.com. Also, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at ill advised the podcast. You're beautiful, you're wonderful, everything about you is absolutely gorgeous. Kidnap your child if you must. And don't join a cult unless they're giving you Kool-Aid and thank you for listening. You've been ill-advised.